Abba Waku Weyu. Once upon a time, long, long ago, before there were the Lakono, the Arawak folk, the forefathers, the Taino, the Mary, the island Arawak, before there were the Kari, the Kalinya, the forefathers of the island Caribs, the Kalinaga, there were the Warao people, the people of the Kanu, the boat people. And the Warao had learned many lessons from their creator, for he desired them to be people of virtue, good people. Now, they had lost their way long, long ago, and he had to remind them through a drought, through changing their ways, the rain returned. And they vowed to never fall off the path again. Time had passed. The old ones didn't pass on the stories. The young ones probably weren't listening. And again, people had lost their way. And now the creator, Kanonatu, had sent a flood to cleanse the place and to remind the people of who they are to be. Now again, they remembered. He told them, you may bathe in rivers, but you may not bathe in the lake. Time had passed. And again, the people had gotten comfortable and had forgotten their promises, had forgotten to live the good way. And the sister, mm, Korobona, and her younger sibling, they went to bathe by the lake, feeling it was now safe. There was nothing to worry about. Having dived into the lake, enjoying themselves, there was a wama, a spirit, at the bottom of the lake, sealed in a staff. Korobona took the staff and shook it, releasing this wama. The staff transformed into the physique of a man and held on to Korobona's hand. He said to her, your sister, she may go, but you shall not return to your father's home. You shall come with me to my abode the bottom of this lake. Colobona felt herself succumb to his desires and went to the bottom of the lake with this one. After she had conceived, he allowed her to return to her home. Now Colobona's brothers, four, they were strong warriors, best of hunters of the Warao people. And they felt such utter shame and disgrace that their sister had broken the sacred vow, the sacred promise. So they went with clubs when they heard she had returned from the lake and had freed the Wama. But seeing their sister, who cried and begged and pleaded mercy for this innocent soul, they let her go. Time had passed. And Korobona was called again to this lake. Now at the lake, there stood a being, this Brahma, who at times his upper body was the form of a man, and his lower body was that of a serpent. At other times, his upper body was the form of a serpent, and his lower body the form of a man. And at other times, he was a complete serpent. Other times, the full physique of a handsome man. Corobona was drawn to him. And again, he took her to his abode. She conceived a son. Now when Corobona returned to her village, she knew that she would incur the wrath of her brothers. So she hid with her child. And hiding with her child, Someone heard the crying in the bush, the brambles moving. He looked and peeped and saw it was Korobona with a young child. He knew right away this must be the child, the son of the Wama. Their creator had told them if they had broken the vow, evil would come upon their people. So he ran to tell her brothers, and they came swiftly with their arrows. Corbona went in front of this young child to defend, and her brothers 
took to the arrows and fired. All of the arrows miraculously curved around Kurobona and hit the child. And to make sure that this child would not return, they took their axes and cut the child into small little pieces. Kurobona, filled with grief, stayed there. She put the pieces of the child together, and covered him with roses and plants, plants in her surroundings. And she swore to her brother that by the blood of this child, they would know justice. Corabona decided she would not leave and she would stay there. Days had passed, Corabona had not ate, and her sister would come visiting her, giving her food. She stayed there by her child, grieving over this child covered in flowers, covered in petals, covered in leaves, the plants, the medicine of the land. And one day, a head and shoulders emerge from beneath the plants, a child that was strong and wise in full armament of a warrior. The child rose and told his mother, weep no more. I shall exact vengeance upon those who did this deed. His cheeks were red. And this child went with his armor and slayed those of her sibling, her brothers, and those of the village who had that evil in their heart towards him. And it is said that he took the wives of their people and grew into a mighty nation. And the descendants of Korobona's child were known as the Caribs, the enemy of the Waraos, the good people among the Waraos that were slain were turned into hummingbirds. So did their warriors rest. And Han Katu, and so it is.